welcome in to the O-Line Committee <laughs> Film Review. Gentlemen, how are you today? That are you kidding me? That thumbnail picture is fantastic. Let's by. roll yes, it sir. again here. That's right. We roll got it our, again. Our, dude, the O-Line Committee Graphics Department has been, and it's a full warehouse of graphics people. Oh, of course. Putting together our stuff here. Just okay. Warehouses of supercomputers. Oh my oh, god, look I at that. Oh, it's so oh, bad. God. Oh, I love, it so much. <laughs> I love it so much it hurts. Oh, are you kidding me? We're all live and we don't care. Oh, love it. Are you kidding me? Sense. New football to talk about? Can oh, we please oh, roll the guys? The fact that we don't have a week without football until February. Oh, it's just I mean, it just sings to my soul. We've made Dude. it through sports purgatory, which is oh, known as so July. Excited. And we're here because no one. I'm watches so excited. Baseball. No. no well, hey, 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 we watch baseball. No we one watch watches baseball. your 11 new baseball team. Easy. But <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm excited for to watch some of these guys come out and kick some ass. I mean, these guys, the two guys I think we're going to highlight today, I think have done it because I went back to watch. The other guy this morning and I was watching Trevor's film last night, but Trevor Penning, the guy that we're going to highlight on the screen, number 70, talk about a guy who's been waiting a long time to come out and show some stuff. And he came out and I thought it was phenomenal. One of the things I love about him was how aggressive he was, how he used his hands. He wasn't afraid to sit on the bull. He was trying to put people into the ground. I mean, this is exactly if you're a young offensive lineman, these are what you want to see. These are the guys that I've been waiting to see Trevor Penning for a while. And I've heard a lot of stories that he is a fighter to the end. He'll fight his own team like that's just who he is ingrained in him. And it came out this last week and it showed. And that's what I'm excited about. And I'm excited to talk about what he did yeah, so I mean, i'll set i'll set the table real quick here and then you jump in jay and y'all shut up and you guys break this down but this is so we're going to do these film we're going to try and pump multiple film reviews a week now going forward here we're going to keep we were doing like 45 minute reviews we're going to keep them shorter so we can do more of these but yes today trevor penning left tackle new orleans saints 2022 19th overall pick out of northern iowa six foot seven 325 pounds I believe he got kicked out of that. practice last training camp, like last year, for fighting three days in a row in training camp. Turf toe last year, never really got going, but he's in line to be the starting left tackle for the Saints. Click subscribe and the like button if you enjoy these film breakdowns, by the way, on the O-line committee. Yeah, and, you know, and, one, one, thing I want, one thing I want to Let's keep interrupting too. Jeremiah, actually. Yeah, it's can, kind I of fun. <laughs> can I speak? Can I speak? One thing, one thing, you know, I wanted to, we we're going to touch on, we're going to do a couple of second year tackles in the league because I think a lot of times people think if you're drafted high or you're a high prospect, like, and if you don't go out and perform right away, it's like, oh, he's a bust, he's gone, whatever it may be. So much of O line play is development and learning how to become a pro, learning what it means to play in the NFL, learning how it, like, the, the process that it takes. And so, I mean, so many people last year when Trevor Penning got hurt, they're like, oh, he's done. He's never going to be anything like, this dude was such a dominant player in college. Like, it was, it was ridiculous to watch his tape. Then you go watch what he did at the Senior Bowl. Like, yes, he's got some anger issues, some aggression. Like, and I've met him. I recruited him. Like, when you see him in his eyes, you're like, dude, you've killed people, and we'll never, we'll never <laughs> find him. Like, I've stared into that dude's eyes. Like, tell me where in Iowa you've buried these bodies. But, like, it carries over into his play. And the thing that I loved about this game – specifically is you saw more controlled aggression out of him than we saw in college so yes. much in college was him just trying to hurt people physically brute just go around you can't get away with that in the nfl but if you can channel that aggression use your technique and then still have that killer instinct those are the great guys those are the dudes that become great now i'm not ready to anoint trevor penning king yet by any means he's got to go out and prove it a lot this year but he has all the makings to be a great left tackle in this league and I'm not right. saying that he – and listen, before we start this, I'm not saying this entire game was phenomenal. I'm saying that there was portions of this game, like 90% of it, where he was in complete control, he was dominating, or the player that he was blocking was on the ground. And when you look at this Saints team and what they might be able to do this year with an Alvin Kamara in the backfield and D David Carr in the backfield, Derek. and then you talk about – Derek, sorry, Derek Carr in the backfield, and then you talk about Ramchek on the other side. I mean, this could be a phenomenal team this year, especially because this is one of the pieces that they've been trying to fill for a long time. And he was hurt all last year year and now he's coming back and the film shows itself yeah i mean the departure of armstead was tough for them you know they drafted him to be able to come in right away they had so many bodies there last year right but, i mean golly I, that's what i'm saying like the, you look at something like this and when you're watching this play it's so fun to watch because it's like a simple zone the other way is he going to be able to reach the three technique i mean these are all things that are huge questions especially because 
that's how J.J. Watt made a lot of his money, splitting those B backsides. You talk about getting in position, the perfect position, feet are moving, great first step, head is following, like nothing is left behind, right? Like everything's one controlled movement. He gets the reach, and at the same time, where's he got to go? Got to hit the ground, bro. Got to hit the ground every single time. And that's what I love about this guy. He's going to fall on top of you. He's going to do everything he can. And then there's Alvin Kamara, just – out of nowhere, squirts right through up. Nobody's going to get me. Like, this offense, I think, is a little bit underrated right now, and probably because everyone's got a lot of question marks as to what's going to go on. But when you talk about what they did this last week, they look good, really good. And they're coached well. Doug Marone does a great job. Jeremiah and I have had a chance to sit down with Doug. He's a phenomenal coach. And I love the way he coaches and teaches guys. He's very hard on them, which I think is right. Yeah, I mean, the, the guard helps make this play a lot, right? If you go back, I know we're going to highlight Penning here, but this is this is what you call a clinic tape, B-block, right? He steps, Ooh. he gains ground, but the big thing is how he throws that outside hand, right? His left James hand. James Hurst. Right, yep. James Hurst. The ability to right here, and we call it pop in the shoulder, right? You see 90, 98 right there. He gets through, he has that shoulder popped, and he turns him, right? If you yeah. turn as a D lineman, now all your momentum is no longer going forward. Right, like right there. Ooh, um, shoulder pop. You got no power. You've got no power going vertically anymore. You have to just try and fight to get yourself back square, which is why you see Penning be able to reach here. I think this is another thing. If I'm the Kansas City Chiefs and I'm watching this right here, I'm going, hmm, 98 should probably be Chris Jones. I don't think Chris Jones gets reached like that. So pay that man, right. Kansas City. Oh! Hey, and by the way, since we're highlighting the B, which is a phenomenal B because he turned his shoulders like the boys in the gym here all the time. But if you go back a little bit, this chip here on the front with Cesar Ruiz and uh, Eric McCoy, I love how – see how he steps? He steps still outside, but he comes back to a Rico block, and it's such a fun block as a guard because you get all this momentum, and then you just get to level that nose tackle right there. And the center continues his momentum, and he's got the reach now, and the fullback, get the hell out of my way. Don't worry, I can slip through anything. Dude, these guys are going to be good go this back, year. Go back real quick one time, and then we can move on here. But I want to see – watch a big piece of how you block zone blocking and how it comes successful is how square are the linemen when they take on the linebackers. Right? Like, are they getting a glancing blow? Are they squaring these dudes up? Watch these two guards when they climb, right? They both make initial contact, right? 51 and 74, right? They both make initial contact with the D lineman. They put their other players in good positions, right? 91, 98, right? They're toast. They're toast, toast. right? McCoy's got him reached. Uh, I mean, he's turned sideways. But watch how they climb. Watch how they leave that. And then right there, they're both completely square on these linebackers, right? They're both completely square, which means they now have control. Right When these linebackers are worried about fighting these big bodies, they can't see where number 41 is. They can't see where the ball is. They're just worried about, how do I get this big dude off me? Right, And 32 makes a fatal error here, 32 for the Chiefs, of going Jeez. backside. Right, He has to fight this over the top and push back to his leverage. But Suiz Ruiz gets a chance to go, and he tries to come and backdoor him here, which is why Kamara is able to get through the gap here with the gap integrity. By the way, that is the hardest Gap name integrity. to say. Yeah. Say Caesar Ruiz. Dude, it is so hard. Caesar is... Ruiz, Caesar Ruiz, Caesar Ruiz, <laughs> Caesar Ruiz. Caesar Ruiz, Caesar Ruiz. <laughs> I know, dude. It's... But, hey, yeah. one of the other great things, and before we move on, I'm sorry. This is like you have no idea how excited I am to watch fresh film. But I love how these guards, they don't wait to go get the linebackers. They climb on them right now. And that's one of the things that you put the linebackers in a panic. Look at that. Right now they're being grabbed, and it's like, where's the running back? I don't know. I can't see anything. This big dude's right in front of me. He's got a hold of me. I can't get loose like this is what football is and this is why it's so addicting god i love this shit let's see it. oh my god this is great i know Beauty. keep yeah. going keep going Alex Show has me has, he hasn't even had a monster yet that's how fired up he is that's i how, haven't even opened guard, it guard guard play is your energy drink that's the you beauty have of no this. idea i'm so excited to watch everybody this year all right here we go here we go here's our guy here penning this. again here all right this is by all, the way by, it looks, this is all the same drive all the same drive here he just looks like he is in a good position here we go. He's got the open side, so he doesn't have to be in a three-point stance. Set, Look at that. Hands set. in front of him. Look at that. Where you going? Nowhere. I love this. He makes a bull rush look like nothing. And that's what's so fun to me because he looks like he's extremely athletic. He's got his hands in front of him. He's ready to go. The minute he gets inside, I'm just going to sit down right now. He's definitely bigger than 323. I don't believe that. Yeah, no. He looks like he's about 330 here, 335. He is. Big. But look how love, easy he sits on this. Right. The, the thing, an underrated thing that's going to go here is he doesn't even have his hands inside. Right. 90's got his hands inside. Right. You can see Penning's got his hands outside on his shoulders. 
usually as a tackle, if you don't have hands inside, your ability to stop the bowl just comes down to pure brute strength and ability to sit, right? Like this dude's got control. Penning's just got the outside here, and he just takes one big head, Two. like big, Boom. big step with his left foot right there and just sits, right? Just sits and doesn't get that shoulder pried open. Right, he doesn't give the short corner. He sits down on that bull rush, and he's able to just stop him right there. Look at that pocket. That's <sighs> such a clean pocket for Derek Carr. I mean, goes back to what you were shoot. talking about, though. Who are they missing? Who are, Who are they, they missing? missing over there? Chris Jones. Chris Jones. Buddy. Where are you at? Where you, if you're if this is one on one with Caesar Ruiz, I mean, Chris Jones is at least getting some type of push up the middle there and getting in the throwing lane. But you know, talking about Penning and Ramchek, these guys have a chance to have two championship tackles, and with the division that's not great down in the south there like i think they're the odds on favorite to win that division yes oh, they make it look easy there don't they here we go baby oh that's a cocked locked ready to rock stand he's right there. he's ready to do something dude look at those <laughs> he, fingers look, they are built for war <laughs> he is he has got every bit of his weight ready to just kill this person in front what of what, what are the stuff so cocked locked ready to rock what, what's uh what what is cocked and what is locked like what are the phases here so you can see he's got we call it well here's a it's a teaching point right there's right. there's we have two types of tension in our bodies in our pre in our stance we have active tension and we have passive tension hmm. right when you have active tension that means that you're locked in right you're locked you're cocked in you're locked like you're no loosey-goosey so that you have so much energy into wherever you're going to push to make your first step you have no choice but to go in that direction. So many times we see, especially in college, guys have passive tension in their bodies, right? They're not locked in, right? And so like right here, his all his tension's locked in on that left foot, right? All because he knows he has to step inside on the right here, right? Based off of pre-snap alignment here, and again, I haven't watched this play, you can see 32 stacked more over the defensive end than he is in the B gap. So my pre-snap indicator is telling me this dude's going to cross my face, right? 22 pressed up against number 18 out there. Number six is topped right over the top of him. My antenna's up. There's something going on here. So I'm going to lock all of my tension into my left foot so that I have nothing, no choice but to drive off my left foot into the right so this guy can't get across my face. Look right? at that. Boom! Oh. Right there. Versus passive tension, if you're not locked in here and you have to then load to go, that dude's going to get across your face, right? If you see so many guys that have to rock because they don't have tension in their body, they're just kind of loose, they can't get there, and 90's getting across your face here. Now he does a great Look job. Look at that. Across, drives his feet. And then finishes them on the ground. Oh. Go back real quick. Go to the beginning real quick before we talk about the ending because we can't even get there yet. I am still so excited. If you notice, and I'm not calling anybody out, but Ramchek looks like he's in a more of a passive stance. You see that? Like I'm kind of just in a stance. I'm kind of – which kind of tells me that he's probably backside of something, right? Like I'm probably going to jab and pick on something. I'm just chilling. I'm going to be reading something. Where you can tell Trevor, look how low he is. He's six foot eight. He's shorter than the guard right there who's shorter than him in real life. Like you can tell he's getting ready to go somewhere. And this dude, when he gets ready to roll, watch this. This tight end barely has to hit this defensive end because, like Jay said, you can tell in his stance he's kind of leaning into a little bit that the minute he goes laterally and I drive vertically, this guy has no power. Number one, I'm way bigger than him. Number two, I'm way meaner than him, and I brought a buddy to the party. Like, you have no chance to stop this. And this is a simple duo play. Simple duo play. This guy goes back five yards and then gets caked in the middle of the logo. Brody, I know you're still feeling it. I know that hurts. Look at that. Oh. Look at that. We're not, dude, oh, look at that. Over. Right, there, right there. Right there. Right there. Look at the fingers. You see them. Fingers. See them. Fingers I in the you. face mask. I warned <laughs> right you. There. Don't play right with there. us down there. Oh. We're dirty. We're little dirty. Mandible, little mandible claw there. And the best part, I bet, you, I, bet you, I bet you he pushes himself up off of it, too. That's the best. Uh, use, you yep. use his body. There it is. See? Yeah. That's what we do. That's what we always did. Push off <laughs> their me, chest. Here, let yeah. me use your body to propel myself back off. And then, oh, Step on his head. Step on his head. I wish he did the best when the old lineman do the step over. Right, where it's like, oh, I got to stand back up. Let me just step oh, my over bad. your face here real the quick. The Allen Iverson over yep. Teron Lou poster. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you just use your – like, they try and get up so fast. Now you know Ooh. why I'm excited for this guy. He's going to be new look. terror. Look at that three look out there. Oh, it looks pretty. Okay, what's happening here? This is interesting. So this is called a three look, right? So you, it's too wide. So this is definitely third down. This is third down, right? Obvious passing situation. So they want to create space for these guards to work in, right? Tackles are used to working in space. It's easy for them. But when you try to make guards, like for the right guard here example, he's got to set a long way to get squared up with this guy and to get inside Almost out. like a tackle. Right, so you got to set like a tackle. They're trying to make them do things they're not used to doing, and then they're going to run some type of game off of it, I'm going to guess. Yes, right, so they're trying to probably. get everyone to move and get into space and panic a little bit and kind of get loosey goosey in their set here. But you can see again, Penning's locked in, 
right? You can see there's no wasted movement. Like that's something that I think has been a big improvement in his game. It's just the way, like in college, he was kind of all over the place. You can see right here, he's locked, and he's just going to fire out of that stance. Boom. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at the hop. Look at the hop here. Hey, you know what I love? He's square. Look how square he is. I can see everybody in front of me. I know what's going on. And one of the things to add to Jay's is look at that big gap that opens up between the center and the right guard, right? That's going to be a big space that somebody's eventually going to have to learn how to cover. Who's not used to covering that space? The three fatties in the middle, right? We don't need to cover all this, but the minute they start <laughs> spreading out, they start forcing us to move our feet more. Like, look at Cesar Ruiz. He's having a little bit of a problem because he's not a tackle. I'm a guard. Look, he set him a little too flat. And he's like, oh, I got this. Now I'm going to slap this hand and I'm turning the corner. Why? It's third down. Quarterback's going to be at about 10 to 7 yards. I just got to get there. And that's why it puts so much strain on these guards. But what I love that Trevor does is throws his hands, sit down. Like, this guy is so confident. And you can see it when he plays. He just, for a guy who's really been named the starter now, and this is his shot, like, he just looks really, really comfortable and like he's having a lot of fun out there. God, look at that. That's a good job by Derek Carr here stepping up on this play, right? Step yeah, up. he looks great. Move, move a little bit to the right, a little shoulder shake, and then hit the receiver. But, wow. A little sidearm. Whoop. A little Mahomesy. Here we go. Here we go. Let me one more time here for you guys. Oh, yep. I feel like when I watch like you guys offensive linemen off to the side doing your little shadow boxing drills, this is it right here, right? Hop, hop, get, get off the line here. Hop, yep. hop back. <laughs> You'll see offensive linemen like in airports, you know, killing time. Right yeah. Go back. You have to be as comfortable in your set as you are walking. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Dude, You and that's the one thing that people forget is like these guys, they're so comfortable being there that you have to learn how to live out of there. That's where you're going to be thinking a lot. That's where you're going to be talking to people. It's almost like you could sit in your stance all day and you're just so used to it where I see young players and they're like – I don't like my stance. I'm like, that's a problem. You should probably fix it. You need to learn how to love it. We are always in our stance. Never does a coach go, you know what, everybody stand up for a minute. Like when <laughs> quarterbacks and OCs in the NFL are having a conversation, your hand is stuck in the ground until somebody says, hold up, or the play gets snapped. I'm not kidding. Like we'd stand there like, the hell are they talking about? I don't know. Don't move. Don't move. <laughs> oh, my God. Like finish the conversation. So I'm telling you, man. It's a big thing, too, if young player, young players don't know how to play out of a three-point stance anymore. Oh. So much of college football has come to a two-point stance game. So much of it is the spread. Like, trying to teach kids how to get in a three-point stance is something that's very hard for them to grasp because they just haven't done it even since high school. Dude, yeah. I still see kids on the right side with their left hand down. Stop it. I'm like, I'm like guys, come on. This is, officially, this is officially too far for me. I'll tell you what. But <laughs> – to go back to the whole conversation about Trevor, I am I'm really excited about him, especially because that is a position that they need to have a huge anchor at. And he's one of these guys that you talk about a young player with a huge, huge potential, has the aggression. That's one of those things that you just don't see anymore. It's guys that want to go out and just have fun and hurt other guys. Like, that's what this game is. Let's go out and be barbaric and crazy and wild and throw our hands in people's faces and they can do it to us. And it's all fair game. Like, that's what it is. <laughs> Here's this young guy coming in, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, we're gonna bring him. Out. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, we're gonna bring him out. We gotta get him out, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's go. So uh, there you go. There's your breakdown. Trevor Penning, left tackle for the New Orleans Saints, going into his second season. O line committee. Click the like button, the subscribe button, hey, and uh, let us quick. know if there's other players you want to see us break break film down on. Am I allowed to trade him into my roster? We'll deal with that in another. Dude, episode. this is like the fourth time the season. No, I'm we're just like a month away from the season. No, live with who you drafted. You made your bed. You lie yeah. in it. Okay. You, you deal with it. Yeah. As my yeah, kids you say, down. you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. Okay. <laughs> I'm cool. Do you rhyme everything with your kids just to make it stick? Is that pretty much the deal? Then they you just repeat to. it a hundred times a day, and you want to kill yourself, but. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, thanks for hanging out with us here on this O-Line Committee film review.